Greetings and welcome to Team Bravo's postmortem video for our game Swap. Our course and education at Full Sail University ending in October of 2015. I am our team leader, Kevin Lee, and let's get started. The game you are playing now is vastly different from what it started out as during the conception stage four months ago. What started out as a top-down 2D action puzzle game with enemies turned into what you see today a 3D FPS puzzle platformer. Needless to say, the game changed a lot from when it was only a short PowerPoint presentation. Once our team formed, one of the first decisions we made as a team was we were going to do everything in our power to cut down on the time we spent having to create assets. While several of us have artistic abilities and several of the assets found in Swap were created by team members, the majority of art assets were purchased from the Unity store to save us all precious time that could be spent on other more important duties. Without the top-down sci-fi package we acquired and the handful of other purchases we made, Swap would not be what it is today. Swap was largely inspired by Portal, developed by Valve. However, instead of portals, our game has the player making use of a portal-type teleportation device that allows two objects to switch places with one another, or the player with an object. While Jacob Brendel implemented that core mechanic into our game fairly easily, it took most of our three months of development time to get that mechanic working as it does in our final build. Early on, we were having a problem with enemies not swapping well, and they would either break or spawn into the world lower than where the floor collider was, causing them to get stuck and or fall off the map. Getting our core mechanic to play nice was arguably the hardest task we had to accomplish throughout our time in Final Project. While we researched what we could, Jacob was largely on his own, due to no one else really having used the idea before in the manner we were attempting to implement. Now, I'd like to pass you off to my team members who have a little more information in regards to the area of development they focused on throughout the project. Hello, my name is Sam Bass. I am the person who designed and created the main menu and the pause menu for our game swap. For the main menu, the things that I liked are that I was given an opportunity to try out the new GUI that was presented in a more recent update to Unity. I had also had some issues that arose later on when I was adding more things to the main menu, like the animator slider. It wasn't working properly, so we had to scrap the animator portion of the main menu. The pause menu started off as a simple texture that would show up on the screen, but it had the problem of glitching through the wall when you are too close to the wall and pausing the game. So we changed it to be under the GUI as well. Hello, I'm Philip Escobedo, and I am the lead level designer for Swap. So with the assets we obtained, I was able to see immediately how certain visual aspects could be laid out and tweaked, and how I could work with them throughout the course of this project. Given the type of game we were creating, my focus was mainly on the majority of the puzzle and platforming elements. Since the story demanded the station to be destroyed in many areas, I decided to build everything in pristine order first. This way, I would know the spacing of objects and what would normally have been visually appealing. After, I went in and began the destruction. A lot of sections of each level felt good and complete, but after feedback from playtesters, we realized some areas were too difficult or confusing and had to be changed. This upset me as I felt it took out a sense of exploration and made it more linear by leading the player from one area to the next. Either way, I had to work with this and eventually decide what you see today given the time limitations. I thought of the pipe puzzle one day when I was playing with my daughter. I wanted to make a marble maze but cooler, so I was going to add in some light. But I needed some glass pipes to run the balls through. I tried to make them out of like long walls that were in a pipe configuration, but that was way too time consuming and didn't look nice. So we found a concrete pipes package on the asset store that was free. We just took those, made them to size, and then changed the material to glass so we could see the light through them. It made this pipe making experience very easy and very rewarding. I think it turned out really nicely and I hope you enjoyed it. Overall, we are all very pleased with how our project turned out. That being said, we are planning to use our current build of the game as a prototype moving forward from this point. 
We plan to rebuild using Unreal Engine 4 to see how well we can accomplish things in that engine.